Welcome. Hi everyone, Red Thinny Blue Tano here, the internet's busiest music nerd, and it's time for a review of the new Ghost album, Impera. Yep, this is a brand new LP from the Swedish metal outfit Ghost. Frontman Tobias Forge and the Nameless Ghouls are back, following up their 2018 record prequel, which was an interesting change of pace for the band stylistically. It saw them stripping back many of the sinister and more elaborate heavy metal passages that marked their music in favor of something that was a, a bit uh, more approachable, snappier. Might have been the band's most accessible project to date, but still had a really cool dark conceptual underbelly to it, inspired by the occult and of course the bubonic plague. And Impair is another conceptual surprise too. One where it sounds like the band is really pulling out all the stops, sparing no expense as well. This is easily Ghost's grandest, most layered, and over-the-top project yet. Narratively, Impera is very much about powerful hierarchies and empires. Not only that, but reverence of their power as well as their eventual death. And this manifests in a lot of lyrics that frame an almost paternal relationship between a powerful system of some sort and whoever is living under it. Nowhere on this LP is that more apparent than on the tracks that on the surface level may read as love songs, but on a slightly deeper but also still kind of conceptually shallow level, the band is playing into a little rhetorical trick here that uh, paints more of a toxic power dynamic, luring the listener or some potential underling into being on the right side of a figure that is uh, most likely totalitarian and drunk on their power, which I think tracks because as with Ghost on a lot of their records, there are some pretty prevalent themes of worship and religion religiosity, and when it comes to abuse of power, cultish devotion often arrives with it hand in hand. The connection Ghost is making here is pretty clear, especially considering all of the not-so-subtle nods to self-appointed religious prophet Aleister Crowley. So Ghost is playing with some pretty huge, timeless ideas on this project that have been mainstays in human history for thousands of years, and the band has decided to embody these ideas in a series of songs and instrumentals that uh, very much embrace the pomp of 80s hard rock, which makes for a record that sounds a lot bigger than prequel, I mean bigger than every Ghost album so far, and that has its pros and cons depending on the track. There's Kaiserian, which I don't think I could have asked for a better first full song on this project. Kaiserian! Like the righteous riffs on this thing are fantastic. There are a lot of cool changes as well, infectious prog passages, strong ending, kick-ass soaring falsetto vocals that kick the whole thing off. I feel like I'm listening to somewhat of a mix of, of Dio uh, with a bit of Rush as well. The track doesn't really skip on the songwriting either, as the whole thing is compelling and edge of your seat from end to end. So there's that, but there's even more cuts on this project, in my opinion, that, um, well, they feel almost weighed down in the camp and the melodrama and the, the volume of it all. Watcher in the Sky, for example, this is just way too much volume for so many forgettable vocal licks and some of the most half-baked riffs to make it onto any ghost song. Call Me Little Sunshine, again, sounds huge, but the pacing on this track is just awful. Much of the time I feel like I'm just sitting here waiting for the band to just get on with it. Please just move beyond this watered-down Metallica pastiche. Plus the constant drum fills and breaks get in the way of the track really building any sort of momentum. And again, sure, the pumping riffs and the reverb and the bells and the group vocals all sound huge. But the instrumental really fails to instill the sense of eeriness that I typically enjoy hearing in Ghost's work, even on, again, their catchiest and sweetest record prequel. And I think this record may be missing that element in some key points because some of the vocals or the writing comes off more cartoony than creepy. Call me! Little sunshine. Then there's the song 20s, which I think is my least favorite ghost song ever. I hope I never have to hear this song again. I really do. The massive chugging riffs uh, come together awfully with the vaguely Latin groove. Boom, ba boom, ba boom. The searing brass hits on top of it are tacky as hell, but the vocals and the lyrics, I cannot keep myself from laughing at them every time I put this track on. In the 20s, 20s, listen up, 
You motherfuckers. <laughs> Maybe I do want to hear it more. Now, this track being unbearably annoying and unintentionally hilarious is unfortunate for a couple of reasons, not just for the sound of it. But I think this is actually one of the more essential moments on the record narratively. Because in a way, it is a smart piece of commentary on the current chaos and abuse of power that has defined uh, the 20s right now, our 20s, uh, thus far. And in a way, the band is able to subtly link that back to uh, the politics and the social struggles of the 1920s, with nods to post-World War I Germany, uh, also the fall that came after the economic inequities of the Gilded Age. Uh, also take a look at the fact that the cover here aesthetically is borrowing a bit from the Art Deco period as well. So again, Again, Ghost is really lacing this track and this record with a lot of interesting conceptual Easter eggs that show that the band is putting a lot of thought into, you know, the whole narrative, the whole concept of this project. I, I just can't stand listening to the music. Mostly on this track, though. Uh, not all of my problems on this record have to do with the sound of it being overblown. Uh, sometimes it's so derivative, it's a little shameless. Like the song Griftwood, for example. I mean, I, I enjoy Van Halen's Ain't Talking About Love too, but d did you not think people were going to pick up on how similar this sounds? I'm just being smacked with deja vu on this one. I much prefer the song Spillways, but even this one feels like a Bon Jovi rehash with just a touch of Manfred Mann in there, with a lot of lyricism that's very vivid and colorful about uh, uh, these metaphysical things like souls and beasts and feeding evil a dark side, which most definitely plays into the record's themes of power. Hunter's Moon is a teaser that I wasn't really crazy about when I first heard it, but honestly, it has grown a little bit on me as I have heard it in the context of the record, though I'm not sure if that has something to do with uh, me just generally preferring it so much more than some of the uh, lower points in the track list. Given the tone of it, I could say the song would fit very snugly into the prequel uh, track list, especially with its sharp and sweet melodies and glistening piano bits. And the closing track is uh, sort of the to be expected lengthy closer that has a dramatic intro, a lot of dynamics. The guitars in the first leg sound like something out of an 80s goth rock tune. It eventually breaks into something heavier, more anthemic, with some great soaring guitars, although uh, there are some zany and theatrical uh, ad-libs vocally that I'm not too crazy about. Very phlegmy hits after the end of certain lines, like, uh, uh, for the dreams that you dread, ah! which sadly just sound forced and um, not at all creepy or scary. So unfortunately, I, I think I'm just not really crazy about this one. I think this is the band's worst LP since Infestissimum, but for a completely different set of reasons. I'd like to remind everyone I have loved a majority of the band's records so far, and to a point I even thought that things were just going to be downhill from the sophomore LP, but then obviously Ghost came back with the amazing Meliora. So maybe I'll just wait to see if the next one appeals to me more. I'm sure there are going to be some hardcore fans that get a lot out of this album, especially if they dive deep into the concept and are, are maybe a bit more favorable personally toward the uh, 80s hard rock excesses that are really being embraced hard on this one. But for me, the excess of this record, even if it does effectively tie into the narrative and the concept of it at some points leads to as many hits as it does misses. I'm feeling a decent two strong five on this one. Tran, position, have you given this record a listen? Did you love it? Did you hate it? What would you rate it? You're the best, you're the best. What should I review next? Hit the like if you like. Please subscribe and please don't cry. Hit the bell as well. Over here next to my head, it's another video that you can check out. Hit that up or the link to subscribe to the channel. Anthony Fantano, Ghost, Impera, forever.